Hi, my name is Sean Bodley with IBM. I'm part of the Power Advanced Technical Skills Team, and I'm located out of Dallas, Texas. And I'm about to demonstrate the automated disaster recovery capabilities of PowerHA System Mirror for AIX Enterprise Edition, utilizing the SVC Global Mirror facility specifically. If you have any questions about this demo or any other demo, feel free to send me an email at the address provided of sbodily at us.ibm.com. And now let me give an overview of our environment. We do have two Power 7 750s running AIX 616 with PowerHA System Mirror Enterprise Edition version 6.1. We also are using Oracle 11.2.0.1. It's configured using the grid infrastructure for a standalone server. We're also utilizing best practices for configuring ASM and LVM together where there is a single logical volume configured to span the entire physical volume, or LUN. We do have two SVCs, one associated with each Power 7 750 at each site. We are using SVC version 5.1. That was a requirement for the proof of concept we performed. However, the latest version is SVC 6.1, and PowerHA Enterprise Edition does also support uh, SVC 6.1 as well. We have a DS4700 that has a couple of LUNs presented up to each SAN volume controller, and then we have a replicated relationship configured using Global Mirror specifically, and I'm going to show you some of this information from the command line on the systems before actually performing the demo. Now for an overview of our actual cluster configuration. We do have a cluster configured called SVC Demo. We do have two sites configured, uh, prod and remote. We have two IP networks configured. One is a type XD IP network. This is usually synonymous with sites specifically and using enterprise edition. And then we also have a more typical production type network for net ether that are uh, Oracle service address is associated with. We have the SVC info configured to the cluster. We have both SVCs defined. We have our LUN relationships configured, RC-RHEL 8, RC-RHEL 9. And then both of these relationships are part of the same consistency group called ASM underscore CG. You can see this relationship here. Now, it is important that these names be identical to what is configured on the SVC. In our configuration, we actually had the SVC configure this for us ahead of time. However, when you define this to the HA cluster and you synchronize and verify the cluster, it will verify that the LUNs exist, and if the relationships and the consistency group is not already created, it will create it for you. If it already exists, it will simply give you a verification message that says these already exist. There's nothing for it to do. Here's an overview of our resource group configuration. We do actually have HA Red listed as the primary system online on home node. HA Blue is the remote DR site. Now, we do actually have this site relationship configured to prefer primary site. This will actually cause a reintegration to occur after a site failure and you fix the original system and rejoin it into the cluster, it will take everything over. Now, we have this configured simply for demonstration purposes. However, in most cases, you would probably just use the ignore option as you don't want that to generally occur. You want to plan a suitable time to move everything back to the primary location. We will not be demonstrating an actual site reintegration anyway. Now, we have a single service IP address of Oracle SVC. It is this 128.250 address. We have a single volume group that consists of the two LUNs at each site. We have an application server that stops and starts the application. And then we also have our replicated resource configured, which is our uh, consistency group. So now with that, 
let me switch over to our putty sessions and get ready to actually show the demo. Now, on the left side here, I have two sessions for HA Red. On the right, I have two sessions for HA Blue. I've put together a little demo script simply to maximize the time efficiency of the demo and to minimize the time uh, of me correcting typos as I try to show this. So I just wanted to show the script to show that there's nothing funny going on there. I'm not manipulating uh, any of the output. So I'll run, I'm going to run the script on each side to gather the system information to show that this does match up to what I showed in our presentation. We have uh, 6106 on each side. We can see that these are 750s. And I can prove that they truly are separate systems by showing this system ID. There's a unique ID on each side. Uh, we happen to be using HDISC 11 and 12 as part of our ASM volume group. You will see that they are actually active on HA Red. That's because the resource group is up and running on HA Red, as you can see on the bottom right hand corner uh, through our, our status information. The other thing you'll notice is that even though the HDISC names match, it's not a requirement. It's just nice from a management perspective that they do. But you'll also see that the PVIDs match. Now, the PVIDs matching is usually synonymous with a local shared HA cluster and takeover environment. Well, in this case, they truly aren't shared disks. These are really four separate physical LUNs, but because of using replication like Global Mirror, it copies everything, including the PVIDs. So to prove that these truly aren't shared disks, what you can do is actually get the attribute of the unique ID of each disk. And if we look right after this 68019 on here, we can see that each one has a separate uh, number. And actually, these 11s happen to be the LUN ID. It so happens that the numbers of the LUN ID worked out to be the same on, a, on each SVC, but they truly are separate LUNs. And then something else to note is this number 2145 is another indicator that they truly are SVC disks. 2145 is the uh, model number for an SVC. So now we can look down at the NetStat output and show that, that the 250 address is indeed hosted on HA Red. I can show that there are processes, Oracle processes running on HA Red. So the, the volume group is active, like I showed previously. The uh, Oracle processes are running. And the other thing I was going to show, which is, in, which is important in the overall configuration of using the SVC replication, is that the HA cluster nodes must have non-password prompted SSH access to the SVC, and I'm going to demonstrate that here. So I can log into Red SVC and get straight to the command line. That's how the HA cluster events process the appropriate commands on the SVC uh, when needed to handle uh, the relationships in the consistency group. So I can actually run a command here just to show our disks and our relationships. There are actually about a dozen LUNs configured, but we are only using two of them for this configuration. And we are using RCRail 8, RCRail 9, and you can see that they are part of the ASM consistency group. They are global and consistent synchronized, which tells me they're in sync with each other. So I'm going to quit out of that. And then what I've got down here on the bottom left of HA Red is a little script that will actually write a record into the uh, table space of the Oracle database. So it writes one a second. And this is really just for demonstration purposes to show that we're, we're writing to the database. Now, of course, this isn't a ton of I.O., but it, it makes it easy to, to visually see that writes are occurring. Then, actually, when we perform the failover on HA Blue, we're going to run this verify script 
to verify that whatever the last number is during uh, the write that we see happen when we fail the system, we're going to verify that that number is truly the same on the other side. That tells us that the, the data uh, was in sync. Now, what I like to do during uh, demonstrating of a failover is I like to also tail the main HACMP.outlaw. This will show us when the event actually starts processing. So what I'm going to do is on HA red, I'm going to fail it with a, a reboot minus Q. Now, I prefer to do a reboot minus Q simply because it gives the same effect as a halt minus Q on the system, which is poof, the operating system is gone. However, I don't have to go back into the HMC and tell the cluster to, or actually the system node, to restart. Now, you can see on the bottom right-hand side here that our cluster status did say, indeed, that OBHA is gone and it's not responding. We're not seeing events processing yet through the HACMP.out. The reason for that is this is all real-time. And remember, we do have a type XDIP network configured. And the default failure detection rate for an XDIP network is 60 seconds. So we have to miss heartbeats for 60 seconds straight across all of them. It's just XDIP happens to be the highest uh, common denominator. And then it will actually log a site down. So we're waiting for that site down to occur. We can see the last record that was written was number 38. And since HA red is dead, I'm going to close these. And you can see while I'm closing them that indeed our takeover started through our event processing. You can also see this through the, you can see what events are processing down here through the cluster status. So we actually already put the service IP address in place. We're varying on the volume groups. We're now executing the start server script, which is starting the application, and I'm going to just restart my uh, cluster status information over here. We can see that the ASM volume group is now active. If I check the netstat output, we can see that our 250 address is in place, and the actual Oracle processes should be starting. Now, it doesn't mean it's all the way up yet, so it took us 60 seconds to actually detect the failure, and then we're going to have to wait a minute or so for all the Oracle services to start. So the, the total amount of takeover time in this, well, you know, in our testing has been roughly three and a half minutes. Now, we do just have two 20-gig LUNs with a single LV spanning across them, but because there are no uh, true file systems, it's ASM and just LV, we don't have to perform the normal FSCKs uh, and file system recovery. All we have to do is swap the uh, relationship from the SVC to make it full read-write, vary on the volume group, and then start the application server script itself. There's nothing for us to do from a file system recovery perspective. So as far as the cluster concerned, it's done with its event processing. It says the cluster is stable. We can see that we're getting several new Oracle processes starting, so we should be close to being all the way up. And I will go back and run my verify script to see if number 38 appears. And we can see right here that the last committed value was, in fact, 38. So that shows us that the data replication is complete. The database is up and running. And overall, that concludes our demonstration. If you have any questions, like I said, feel free to send me an email at sbodily at us.ibm.com. And thanks for watching.